One, two, three, action. Oh, y'all, I'm so excited and I'm just in a place of just growth and development. Like I'm better. I feel good. Like everything is going like it should go because I'm choosing to allow God to flow through me. And I'm I'm so excited. So that leads me into this topic, prioritizing your time, which in this part, which is a part one, is decluttering. And y'all are seeing me in my most naturalist state. Um, this is me. And before we go any further, I just want you to take a deep breath and just, <sighs> just let it all go. Like this is a girl talk. Like we are at home. Grab your tea, grab your water, grab your notebook and get ready to take notes because I feel like it was a challenge for me um, a few years back when it came to trying to declutter. And I just want to make it very clear as to what prioritizing your time can look like because we got so many goals, we got so many things we want to get done, but when we are cluttered in our mind and in our lives, none of that can be possible. We can't achieve anything when we're overly stimulated, when we're consistently busy doing this, doing that, and we don't make time for ourselves. And so decluttering your mind for me has been a journey of making sure that I'm good with me. And I found that number one, spending time with yourself is key to understanding what's going on with you. Because if you don't know what's going on with you, you can't help anybody else and you can't help anybody else achieve whatever they're trying to achieve. So you got to maintain you. Number two, get in a quiet place. Y'all see me like right here. This is my quiet place. Like if you're someone who doesn't have the opportunity to have a quiet place, I encourage you when you have at least 10 minutes in your bedroom, closet space, whatever, like you need that time to just get still with yourself. And I, when I say I value my time alone so much that I spend quality time with myself more than I spend with anybody else. Because there are so many things that can go on in our minds and we have all these things built up and it can have a really devastating impact on our lives because we're trying to figure out why things aren't going the way they should be going, why we're upset and frustrated, why we have anxiety. And it's because we have a lot of things going on up here that we're not talking about and working through. And so that leads me to number three. It's time to start writing out the things that you don't like, the things that you want to change and the things that you've allowed to go on that you have not dealt with. And it can take a lot of time or it can take the right amount of time it needs to take. The choice is yours because this is your life. And I had to make the same decision for myself when I was like, you know, there are things in my life that I don't like. And this stems back over to six years when I decided that, you know, I wanted to start making better habits and I wanted a better life for myself. So I made a list of all the things that I hated. I made a list of all the things that I wanted to change about myself. And I said, God, you're going to have to show me because there has to be more than where I am right now. And so over the course of this journey, like I found the things that I love, the things that I hate, the people that I don't want to be around, the people that I want around me, it all matters because there are things that we have allowed to be built up since we were children and it go it goes over into our adulthoods and we're trying to figure out why things are the way they are, why we're thinking the way we're thinking, why we're around people we're around, why we're choosing the relationship we're choosing. And it all boils down to what's going on up here. And that leads me to number four, community. If you're going to 
list out all the things that you don't like about yourself. You need to have people in your life who are going to be on the journey with you to help you make better choices. And so for me, I joined a church and I said, okay, I got to start decluttering all the things that are going on up here. And so I need someone who can pour into me and help me filter out all the things that I was thinking negatively about myself and start filling myself up with positive and healthier things that are going to help me better myself. When you become disciplined about your time, you will make this a priority because you'll realize that nothing you do in life will grow if you don't focus on you. <laughs> and for me, like, I'm really big on that because no matter what I'm doing, you are what you consume. And so whatever I'm doing in life, I always want to be able to declutter and say, okay, this is where this is coming from. Let's work on that. And for some people that can be challenging because it's hard to start making changes. No one wants to make changes, but they want the results. And for me, I was like, you know what? It's going to take time and it's going to take consistency and commitment, but future growth and growth and development within itself is key to decluttering. And so how do we declutter? Number one, Enjoy being good by yourself. Create that space for yourself so that you can start analyzing what's going on with me. Create that community and start writing out the things that you don't like and the things that you want to change because without those things, we can never really get to the root of what's really going on. And so for me, I want it better. And I made a list of what it's going to take to have to get those things under control. And so for me, it was getting rid of people in my life that didn't need to be there. I spent at least six months isolated from a lot of people so that I can spend time by myself so I can get to know myself. I removed myself from social media for over a year. And I do that consistently. Like every few months or so, I'll remove myself from a lot of things just so that I can remain consistent in knowing my own thoughts because you can become overly stimulated and too cluttered with everyone else's opinion that you can't even hear your own thoughts. And that leads me to my point of prioritizing your time. If you give everybody your time and you don't have time for yourself, you will find yourself drained. You will find yourself abused by people who intentionally did not mean to intentionally hurt you. But because you're giving so much of your time, they will abuse that and take advantage. And so I was like, no, no more. Yes, all the time. It's, it's no, I'm busy. I saw your text. I got it. But right now I'm focused on me. And I saw things that I wanted for myself. I had goals. I have goals that I want to reach. And so you have to be, you have to be strong enough to say, I want better for myself. And it's time for me to start decluttering all the things that are going on up here so that I can get to the dreams that I've written down on my journal. Habakkuk 2 and 2 says, write the vision and make it plain. And so God gives us all these dreams and the only way we're going to reach them is if we're ready and willing enough to start saying, okay, God, get rid of the mess that's in my mind and show me what needs to come out so that you can fill me with what I need to be thinking and acting on. And so what it takes to declutter is really being consistent with staying true to your time, staying true to your space, and staying true to spending quality time with God and having community to keep you accountable for the things that you want in life and the goals you want to reach.